Undersized rugs, mismatched lighting temperatures, matchy-matchy furnishings, and cluttered open storage. These are all interior design blunders that you may have heard of before, alongside numerous others that threaten the character of your home. But there is one mistake that's so inconspicuous and so commonplace that even the most accomplished of designers still fall for it. It was just the other day that I stumbled across an article from Forbes which reads, eight interior design trends going away in 2024. Now, most of this article is made up from a collection of quotes from other designers, but some of it reads like this. Grey is out. The world is too upside down to consider any colour that could be interpreted as sombre and serious. Curved sofas will be far less ubiquitous in 2024. Enough already. Once evocative of mid-century design, they have cropped up in everything to the exclusion of all else. Hell Green is also going away in 2024. Mary Alice Palmer calls this hue ready for retirement. And white kitchens are on their way out. While they had a strong moment, there's a heavy pull away from this towards stain grade cabinets and warmer versus cooler tones that make a room feel warmer. I don't know who decides when something is officially unfashionable, especially when it comes to something like colour, but it does seem that there tends to be a general consensus, and in the eyes of the interior design community, you're pretty much all but guaranteed to be doing something wrong, at least in some point in time, from someone else's point of view. With over a decade now of architectural experience, I think I have a pretty good grasp on what not to do when it comes to designing a home, but with a general consensus quickly being formed on what's desirable at the current moment in time and what isn't, it occurred to me that participating in a passing interior design trend can be one of the most common and costly design mistakes you can possibly make for your home and one that even I'm not completely immune to. Back in 2017, when I was extending our Titchener family home, all that was at the forefront of my agenda was to add functionality to this space. The construction of this three meter extension and ground floor renovation made this whole space far more usable by adding in a ground floor toilet, a dedicated dining area, and an enormous bifolding door that opens up the entire space to the garden. But despite the value of this redesign coming mostly from its space planning, when it came to the design of my mum's kitchen, it enters the realms of interior design, as with kitchen cabinetry and other internal finishes, these are areas of a project that you can potentially hire an interior designer for. On small projects like this, interior design services are usually something that an architect will include as part of their design contract, and in my case, by choosing matte white cabinets, matte white countertops, and a white marble tile backsplash, I designed a kitchen for my mum that, in hindsight, is clearly an ultra-minimalist aesthetic. What didn't occur to me during this time period is that ultra-minimalism was incredibly popular, and despite this design coming from an overall lifestyle philosophy, it still falls under the category of a trend. So despite my best intentions, if my mum were to ever sell this place in the next few years, it's quite possible that my design decisions could cause this property to lose resale value due to ultra-minimalism and white kitchens falling out of favour. And regardless if you agree or disagree with the sentiments of news outlets like Forbes or any of the other self-professed interior design gurus over on the internet, there does tend to be an overall consensus. And even if being on trend matters very little to you, it will have an impact on the overall perceived value of your home and furniture. So I suppose the short answer to this problem is to make sure that you don't participate in a dying trend, which is much easier said than done. But what's encouraging is that not all trends fall out of fashion quite as dramatically as others, as some dead and gone trends are rather obvious, where others are not quite so much. But if not making the wrong design decisions is important to you, there is a way to be able to tell ahead of time which trends are going to die the fastest. In 2009, a Stanford study was published titled How Adoption Speed Affects the Abandonment of Cultural Tastes. And in this study, Jonah Berger and Gaël Le Mans found that when studying the adoption of baby names, cultural tastes that have been adopted quickly 
tend to die faster. In this study, names such as Charlene, Trisha, and Christy saw huge spikes in popularity across the 20th century, but Berger and Lamont discovered that they saw just as dramatic abandonment as the speed in which they were adopted, which, when translated to the world of design, might help us predict how quickly certain finishes or styles are going to fall out of fashion. The reason for this is due to a cultural phenomenon we now tend to know as a fad, which is in essence a trend that explodes in popularity, only to be met with just as dramatic of a decline. And because fads tend to be perceived quite negatively, people quickly want to shed any social identity associated with them, where changing the name of your child is quite a bit more complicated than swapping out the style of your kitchen or sofa. With the viral nature of social media and platforms like TikTok, this is resulting in interior design trends turning into fads even more frequently, where trends like Gen Z postmodernism, blobjects, Barbie core, cottage core, or any other kind of core for that matter, are perhaps some good examples. But with some things, the line between a trend and a fad isn't quite so obvious, where some other recent things that have risen in popularity might be lime wash paint, organic shapes, slap walls, or traditional wall mouldings. And despite these things not being quite so brash as some of the fads I mentioned earlier, their speed of adoption does make you question how quickly they're going to begin to look dated, as it may only be a matter of time before we all start taking them down. A large reason we follow these trends, or spend valuable minutes of our lives watching YouTubers like me talk about them, is largely because it's safer. You may not even realise you do this, but there's a cognitive bias behind your every purchase, where thanks to our incredible brains, we're adept in taking mental shortcuts that save our energy, where we tend to witness a phenomenon otherwise known as the bandwagon effect. These cognitive biases are known as heuristics, where, for instance, we may unconsciously follow a trend to seek approval or status, or choose the colour of our kitchen simply because we desire acceptance from our architectural peers. And interestingly, even if you do choose to go against a trend, you even fall into the trap of the reverse bandwagon or snob effect, which can even become a trend in itself. So, equipped with all of this information, it can feel as though you can't win when it comes to trends, as no matter what you do, by default, our brains recognise these popular stylistic choices created by the bandwagon effect to be representative of a certain period of time. And once this time period has passed, these styles become something we no longer want to associate ourselves with. So with upcoming trends in 2024 like bookshelf wealth or the resurgence of chrome, it can be tempting to allow these to inform our upcoming purchases, where their speed of adoption may indicate their speed of abandonment in the years to come. The point of this video isn't to suggest that I'm immune to any of this, or to say that following past trends is even a mistake, as really, we're all free to use design as a means of self-expression however we please. But I do think that we can be somewhat liberated from the concerns and repercussions of not being on trend by focusing on functionality first and appearances second. As when we base our decisions on our Instagram or Pinterest feeds over what works well in the real world, you can pretty much guarantee that you're going to end up having made a regretful decision down the line. So instead of keeping up with interior design news outlets or listening to YouTubers like me, we may be far better off spending our time understanding the proven design principles and philosophies that focus on things like functionality, honesty, well-being, durability, and sustainability. As it's this kind of design that tends to enrich our lives rather than sap them of energy, resulting in interiors and furnishings that truly stand the test of time. But I'd love to hear from you guys some of your thoughts and experiences with this down in the comments below. And if you did find this video helpful, it really helps to drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll be sure to see you in the next one.